Welcome to the next lecture of clustering module and in this lecture we are discussing about how agglomerative clustering works. So let's just understand basically agglomerative clustering is a part of hierarchical clustering. In hierarchical clustering we have two different kinds of clustering techniques. First is agglomerative approach and the other one is divisive approach and in this lecture we are discussing about agglomerative approach. Okay, so let's understand what actually is agglomerative clustering. It is basically a bottom up approach. We need not to know about the number of clusters beforehand. In this algorithm, it get to know about the optimal number of clusters once it completes all the iteration of its own. Okay, so this model doesn't need to be given any input initially about the number of cluster it wants. It treats each data as a singleton cluster at the outset. Then it successively agglomerates pairs of clusters until all clusters have been merged into a single clusters that contains all data. So let's understand the algorithm first. Step one, each data is a single point cluster. You have to consider that each data point is a single cluster. Then make a cluster by taking two nearest points together. Then take closest clusters and combine them. And finally repeat step three until there is only one cluster left. So initially we will be considering all data points as the cluster point. Then in the second step, we will combine the two nearest clusters, two nearest points to make a cluster. Then in the third point, we will be comparing different clusters together based on the distance. And in step four, what we will do is we will repeat step three until we reach to a single cluster. So now let's understand. Suppose we are given this data. Okay. And now we have to perform the algorithm. So step one is we are considering that each data point is a cluster point. Now we'll be combining two nearest cluster points. So as you can see in this case, these two cluster points are the closest one. So we are preparing a cluster from them. So that's the step two. Okay. Now in step three, we'll be combining all these clusters point which are closest to each other. Okay, so let's perform. So we, if we will see these points are closest to each other. Okay, we have combined them. Then these are second closest point to each other. And we'll learn about dendrogram. We'll see that how dendrogram is used in agglomerative clustering after the agglomerative clustering model performs its algorithm. So you have seen this cluster in previous intuition video. We have first combined this one and two. Then we combined five, six. Then we combined three. Then we combined seven, eight. Then we combined this one, two, three, four in a single cluster. Then five, six, seven, eight in a cl uh, single cluster. And then in the last, we combined all these points to a single cluster. So using this now, what we'll do is we'll prepare the dendrogram. So first of all, we have prepared one and two. So, so, uh, so these are the clusters, uh, cluster points that we have. And this is the Euclidean distance of these cluster points. So initially we were having one and two. So let the uh, Euclidean distance between these two points be this only. So we have one and two, right? So we have joined one and two and let's say this was the Euclidean distance. Then we combined five and six. So five and six has a, a little bit more Euclidean distance between them. So five and six. Then we combined one, two and three. So one, two and three. Right. This level, this level or this height depends on the Euclidean distance between these points. Then we combine seven and eight and let's say the Euclidean distance be a so seven and eight. Then we combine one, two, three 
and 4. So clusters of 1, 2, 3 with the 4. So this was the cluster and we are getting the distance. So let this distance be this. Okay. And then what we have, then we combine 5, 6 and 7, 8. So let this be 5, 6 and 7, 8. And then we combine 5, 6, 7, 8 with the 1, 2, 3, 4. We combined 1, 2, 3, 4 with 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is the dendrogram that we finally reach up to. And now using this dendrogram, we have to look for the longest branch. Okay. So this is branch one. This is branch two. You can say this is the longest one, but it is being cut over here by this plane, right? And this is also a longest one, but this is being cut over here by this plane. So we have to look for that longest line, which is not being cut by any of the plane. So this is the longest line over here in case of this dendrogram. So if it is the high, uh, longest line in this dendrogram, then what we'll do is using this line, we'll, we'll get a plane from it. So this is the line coming in the middle of this line. We'll draw this line. So we are cutting two lines over here. So that means the optimal clusters that we can have in this data set is 2. So the optimal clusters be I cluster this and cluster this. So we can prepare two clusters that is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? The length of the these lines indicates the difference between these data points. The farthest the farther the data point the more will be the distinguish it uh, the more will be the Distinguishativity, the more will be the difference between these two cluster points. Right? So we have two clusters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is how agglomerative clustering works using the dendrogram and finds the optimal cluster that is best suited for this approach. How agglomerative clustering works, why we need a dendrogram, and what it is used for. So We'll be implementing all these concepts using Python in this hands-on code. So first of all, we'll be importing our libraries, the basic ones, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Okay. And now the data that I am choosing for this particular understanding of the model is a study data where I have three columns. That is a repetition time, study time. That is, it means the repetition time a student takes to revise the concepts and study time means the total time a student takes to understand a concept okay and this knowledge level is the output so we are basically working on a clustering algorithm so we don't need an output so if i remove this knowledge level okay here i am removing this knowledge level column so our data is an unsupervised data we have no labels for it so we are good to go for our clustering approach over this data okay so we have 50 entries in this data and that's our data description that's the stats of our data so the average repetition time is 0.38 or you can say 38 hours and the study time is 46 hours right and now if i'll show you how our data looks like is this is the distribution of our data and we are trying to cluster this data you might be thinking that these are the outliers in this data but don't worry about it just understand how the algorithm works and later on we can look over these things that we can remove the outliers or this thing or that but now you just understand how the algorithm works okay and as i've done in the previous lecture also i'm scaling the data so as so as to have a similar data distribution which will make the working of our model unbiased now I'm showing you the elbow method, but we need a dendrogram over here. Okay. This is the same k-mean uh, elbow method that we have used in the k-means algorithm. Okay. And now you can see this is the elbow graph we are getting. This is the optimal number of clusters. That is three clusters are the optimal number of clusters 
after that we are linearly decreasing the WCSS value on increasing the number of clusters so this is the optimal number of clusters that we can have according to WCSS graph or the elbow graph right and now we'll uh, now I'll show you the dendrogram approach for that I'll use skypy so from skypy dot cluster dot hierarchy so this algorithmative clustering is a part of hierarchical clustering right and it's a bottom-up approach so this is hierarchy and we'll import the dendrogram and the linkage that we want okay dendrogram yeah now we have imported the dendrogram now we'll be using it and the linkage that i'll be using is word linkage because it is it works iteratively as we want our model to do so it will calculate the euclidean distance and will club each of the data points to each of the clusters to uh, centroids to each other and will calculate the value so uh, i'll set linkage linkage over the data i have so data scale and then which method i want to use is i want to use the word method so word okay and now we have the euclidean distances between each cluster in z right because i have used the linkage function and this linkage is using the word function to calculate the distance between each cluster point and now it's time to plot so i'll say uh, okay so for that I'll, uh, we have to set the figure size and axis so fig and x equals to plt dot subplot and let's set the size so fig sorry so fig size equals to uh, let's set it to be 5 is to 6 right and then x equals to will be plotting our dendrogram so dendrogram and then I'll pass the z value because it has the linkage distances and then plt dot tight layout because it's a dendrogram tree so plt dot show uh, okay wait a second this is a plots So here we go. This is our dendrogram that we are finding out using the data we have after using word approach. So now you can see the longest line that we have. Okay, this is line one, line two, but this line two is getting this horizontal line between. So we have uh, this line also, but in this, in case of this line, we have this horizontal line. So we have two lines, this line or this line. So you can clearly see that we have this line being the longest. So if we cut out this in between, we have three lines cutting the horizontal planes. That means the optimal number of clusters that we can choose is equals to three as we are finding in the elbow graph. So you have validated your dendrogram as well. And now we'll be using the algorithmative clustering with three number of clusters. So for that, I'll use the cluster module from scikit-learn. So from sklearn dot cluster import the agglomerative clustering. Okay, and then uh, let's say name it as ag agglomerative and agglomerative clustering now number of clusters and clusters equals to three then the distance i'll measure is using the affinity equals to euclidean euclidean
and then the linkage I am using is the word linkage okay then I'll train my model so ag dot fit data scaled so here we go we have trained our model and now let's check so I'll prepare a data cluster data equals to data dot copy and then I'll be pasting the data so cluster data I'm creating a new column that is cluster prediction of the agglomerative model equals to ag dot fit predict data scale right so the predictions of the labels I'm putting up with the data I have okay let me just show you so the cluster data dot head so these are the labels the model is assigning to our data entries we can check the cluster labels as well so ag dot labels so these are the labels for each of the data entry right so we have a uh, three unique labels 0 1 2 right and I have shown you the data and now it's time to visualize that how our model has clustered the data so for that I'll use scatter plot so plt dot sorry plt dot scatter equals to sorry plt dot scatter now we have to pass on the x and y, x and y data so data this will be the x data then data sorry, then data this will be the y data now c equals to cluster data and i have to mention what i am considering to get the scatter plot cluster predictions and the c map is the rainbow map so c map equals to rainbow okay and now setting the x labels label so it is the repetition sorry x label it's the repetition time and y label it's the study time okay okay repetition time copy it so this is x this is x label then study time is the y column so y column and y label then plt dot show here we go these are the three labels that agglomerative clustering model is predicting uh, cluster 1 cluster 2 cluster 3 so you might be thinking that it's taking it to a cluster 3 yeah it's actually outlier you can uh, remove it when you will process your data these these can be considered as an outlier depending on the conditions you are following to treat your data right so this is how agglomerative clustering works how we use a dendrogram and find the optimal number of clusters and we train our agglomerative clustering model over that and finally we predict that yes this data instance will belong to this cluster or this cluster so this was all about agglomerative clustering i hope you would have understood the concept really well so best of luck and keep following